the vision ultimately is 24-7 automatic um, fuel production at, of course, the lowest cost and lowest use of resources. Welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. I'm with my buddy Martin today, and you get the privilege to learn from Martin when it comes to automation and how we can adapt to this labor shortage that apparently the whole world is going through. Now, Martin and I are both, we're in the U.S. right now at a beautiful open house in Wixom, Michigan. So, Martin, let's get into the topic of the labor shortage and how automation will help us adapt to that labor shortage and how profoundly significant it is around the world as you and I have both traveled around. Yeah, thanks, Tony, and uh, welcome to Anco and our technology days here in Wixom, and welcome to your viewers online. Look, where do I start? Anco, 50 years. Next year, we are in 50 countries with about 3,000 customers, and what you say is absolutely spot on. We've got a recurring subject of labor shortages, skills shortages across the world. And it doesn't matter whether you look into Korea or Japan or here in the U.S., uh, to find skilled labor is really getting more and more complicated and difficult. And so Anchor embarked on uh, a project we call AIMS, Anchor Integrated Manufacturing System, that automates the tool making process. And so the vision ultimately is 24 7 automatic um, tool production at, of course, the lowest cost and lowest use of resources. AIMS is system that is agnostic first and foremost, so it's an open system. Uh, you are able to integrate Anchor machines as well as other uh, machines into the AIMS universe. And uh, robots will transport pallets from workstation to workstation to workstation with periodic checking at, for example, a Zola, uh, measuring a station back into the tool production. Well, Martin, I'm sitting here learning from you currently, and Anka is a global brand, you know, a famous global brand. You're all over the place. You talk about AIM, so you're obviously supporting automation, and I know you have a passion for it because, again, just to go back globally, we're having this labor shortage, and we're all doing what we can to create the awareness we need. How important do you think it is for companies here in the U.S. and globally to adapt automation into their facilities, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but immediately, and stop waiting around to see what's going to happen next? I personally think it's incredibly important. What's your viewpoint on that? Well, our viewpoint is that automation is really the next step that the tool manufacturing industry has to take and actually is already taking in many regions in the world. When you look at the productivity increases that you can achieve with AIMS, and we are currently working with five customers on AIMS installations, you'd be blown away to see the numbers that uh, come down. And so Industry 4.0, big subject uh, in uh, 2017 when it was launched originally, um, it's about connecting machines, it's about um, IoT, it's about using the robotics and the automation to what we call produce more with less. We produce more tools with less dollars invested, more tools with less humans employed, more tools with less energy consumed. And so our objective uh, when we started three years ago with AIMS was to achieve all that. And um, of course, it works wonderfully with our anchor machines. You know, Martin, you bring up some really good points, which leads me perfectly, because I know the audience right now, there's going to be some of them that go, ah, I, need, I know I need automation, but it's expensive, or I don't have the budget for it right now. But you and I would make the discussion that we're probably saving real estate space by doing multiple things in a machine, we're exciting the next generation of people who want to come in and maybe play with the robot. That's right. We're working more hours in a day in a 24-hour time instead of throwing people at machines. Me personally, Martin, I've been into machine shops, and I'm pretty sure you have as well, where half of the machines are sitting idle because there's no one to press the green button or switch the job out. This really does, although the front-end number might be a number that could sometimes be scary. The back-end number of, of price per tool or price per part, all of this really does overall reduce that cost. And don't you have a financing team as well that helps people make those investments? That's right. Uh, that's right, Tony. We, um, we help our customers with um, financing solutions as well. But uh, just coming back to the price point, of course, um, the productivity gains that um, our customers receive through installation of AIMS um, far outweigh the cost of the system in the first place. And it doesn't have to be a big installation, right? We have some AIMS installations only on a few machines, on a half a dozen machines, 
We also have AMS installations currently in the works for several dozen machines um, uh, with an Asian customer. And so the lowest cost per tool has been um, a strong focus for Anchor over the last, I'd say, seven, eight years. And AMS is helping us to achieve just that, lowest cost per tool on an Anchor AMS system. Well, Martin, another buzzword, as we're utilizing a lot of them today, and we're getting people excited, is this concept of onshoring or reshoring. And it's not just happening in Australia, where you currently live, but it's happening in a lot of places around the world, and certainly here in the U.S. Would you, do you see the same thing with reshoring, and how are you supporting that? Well, look, and that's where AIMS, I think, um, hits the nail on its head. Um, we have seen a lot of customers, especially after last three, four, five years, to want to be in control of their supply chains a lot more. And they're reshowing capabilities back into their own factory or close to their factories. And so with AIMS and with the automation that comes with it, it doesn't really matter where the machine sits. The human cost is literally excluded from uh, the profit and loss uh, calculations. And so. Um, we have had uh, great success in reshowing uh, some of those activities. We see lots of movements of existing machines in the market, but also new customers coming to us and installing those machines, not in the traditional destination countries, but closer to home, and especially here in the U.S. I like that answer, and in correspondence with that, it'd be remiss for me not to bring up the fact that sometimes we can't do it all alone, can we? As much as we want to do on our own, we have partnerships in place that allow us to implement these automation processes, and you have a couple of great partnerships you'd probably like to mention as well, right? As I said, the system is uh, open and agnostic, so any machine will ultimately work with AIMS. We're working with a number of customers who have asked us to integrate existing machines into the AIM system and uh, our teams are working on that. Um, I'd probably uh, pick Zola as uh, one of the partnerships that we are the most proud of. Um, Zola Machine is already um, integrated in our, into our AIMS uh, solution as we speak and so um, wonderful opportunity to measure your tools while they've been uh, manufactured on Anchor machines and you can choose whether you want to measure every single one or every sixth tool or every tenth tool. Martin, you was using all of my favorite buzzwords from flexibility to productivity gains to agnostic being able to utilize these systems on any machine. Even if there's 30 of the Enco machines, you can support all the parts of the industry for everyone watching right now. This is not the future. Listen to my friend Martin. He's been around the world. This is something we need to implement now. This is something we need to ignite the inspiration of our youth on. And this is what Enco is doing to support the industry. So Martin, thank you so much for your time sharing and your wisdom with the MTD audience. My pleasure. And it is an amazing show we have going on here, and I know you're in demand everywhere, so thank you for your time, and we'll let you get back to your regularly scheduled program. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you for joining us here at the Technology Days in Wixom.